Before continuing removing the cylinder head, we decided to check are we at timing so to be sure that we don't have any jump timing chain or anything like that. I'm pretty sure that we're not going to have problem like that, but I want to be sure 100%. So this is the timing tool which we're going to use. This is the crankshaft pin which is locking the flywheel. This is for the camshafts and this here is for the valves itself. So we're going to install all of them to see are we at time. So I want to show you, we're going to start with the um, walking plate for the camshafts and uh, this is how it came in the tool bag. I'm going to show you that you are not going to be able to install it back here because you are not going to have enough space. My colleague now is going to show you. It's impossible to install it while it's assembled like that. If you want to install it, we're going to show you how. So to be able to install the walking plate, you're going to need to remove these two holding tools for the camshafts and first start with the bridge which goes over the camshafts we're just going to tighten one of the bolts on the right side and after that then you're going to be able to install these two walking plates for the intake and the exhaust camshafts and yeah uh, this is the intake walking plate and right now the camshafts are timed this is the walking plate for the valves and as we can see we have two pins for the exhaust and the intake camshaft and we can clearly see we have the same spots on the valves plates which should align with these two pins and let me try to open something yeah, yeah, yeah. like a glove so right now the valves the boat bounces and the camshafts are locked in place. The only thing that it leaves is to put the walking, walking pin for the crankshaft, which is locking the flywheel itself. The hole which you need to install this pin, I'm going to try to show it with camera. Okay, I'm going to put on an arrow to show you where it, it is exactly is. As we can see, it's below the starter motor and this is where we're going to install the walking pin. So it's possible when you walk the camshaft to not be exactly at point because we have small movement of the crankshaft a few degrees up and down but if you put the walking plates for the camshaft you are going to be pretty much really close to the hole of the flywheel. So right now the crankshaft and the camshafts are locked in place and we are 100% sure that this engine is at time so we don't have any jump timing chain or anything like that now we're going to continue with disassembling probably the oil pan we have actually two four balance shafts on the oil pump so we're going to walk them up when we remove the oil pan actually we're going to walk them when we are uh, reassembling back the engine uh, but yeah we're going to continue with removing the oil pan for that probably we're going to need to Remove the, uh, remove the front axle or at least lower it down a little bit okay so after removing the oil pan I want to show you how to align the balance shafts of these engines so right now I'm going to show you in the flywheel just get good so right now the timing the walking pin for the crankshaft is insert in the flywheel and the balance shafts are right here. This is the both balance shafts. And uh, once again, we're going to use these two to work them in place. So we can see the square curving of every balance shaft. Uh, and now we're going to show you how to work it with a special tool. You're just going to place it like that. And right now, they are worked. So when we are assembling them back together, we're just going to hook up this tool like that and we're going to assemble everything back together. By that time in the oil pump timing chain. Just for reference, right now the, the balance shafts, this is how the weight of the shaft looks like. The weight is on the bottom of the last fourth cylinder. So this is how it should look like when you are at top dead center on cylinder number one.
Okay, so everything is disassembled, the camshaft, the vanos gears, everything is removed. So this is how it looks like, everything is sorted out and this is the cylinder head itself. Okay, so before installing the camshafts, you're going to need to plug in the crankshaft timing tool, which is already plugged in. It's pretty easy to find the right spot, because right now we don't have injector and the spark plug, and we can clearly see the piston directly from the two holes that we are at top dead center on cylinder number one. So right now the as I said the timing tool is installed in the hole of the flywheel. The next step is going to be to yeah I'm going to install the camshafts right now. I'm going to lock them in place with the timing tool once again and after that I'm going to lift up the car and uh, lock the balance shafts. The balance shafts are locked with the special tool like we can see. So the balance shafts are timed to the crankshaft. Okay, so the camshafts are timed. I just want to show you the orientation of the camshafts because some of you can have a little trouble if they did not make any markings. It's easy to orientate by that I mean on cylinder number one. The lobes of the camshaft should point to each other on cylinder number one. As we can see on the exhaust camshaft, the lobes is pointing to the intake camshafts. Like that. It's going to be a little hard to set on camera. And then it is really hard to get wrong the camshafts because on the exhaust camshaft you're going to have one additional lob for the high fuel pressure pump like that and you're not going to have it on the intake camshaft. So pretty straightforward, the exhaust camshaft has one additional lob. This is the orientation, the, I just put the, the timing chain, just want to show you these two pins which are holding the plastic guides for the timing chain, the smaller one. The smaller bolt goes in this hole, the bigger bolt goes here. So, yeah, now I'm going to tighten all the bolts for the timing chain guide. After that, we're going to install the two vanos gears. It does matter how you're going to install it, you just need to push it in place. And yeah, as I told you, I'm going to install brand new bolts for the vanos gears. The torque for these bolts, bolts were 20 Nm plus 180 degrees. So the bolt uh, valves wheels are in place with the camshaft reading wheels. All the bolts for the chain guides are tightened to these two bolts. This one, uh, this, this one and that one here. Right now the bolt for the crankshaft is finger tight, like that. These bolts, as I told you, I, I installed brand new bolts, are not tightened, they are rotating freely. Still, the locking pin for the crankshaft is installed with the balance shaft timing tool. So now I'm going to tighten up the crankshaft bolt to 300 Nm and after that we're going to remove the crankshaft timing pin, which once again is here, and the balance shaft a walking tool and we're going to tighten these two bolts. So let's first tighten this bolt on the crankshaft to 300 Nm. So the crankshaft bolt is tightened, now the balance shaft walking tool is removed with the crankshaft pin, the bolt are removed. The camshaft wheels are locked with the timing tool and now we're going to tighten the bolt bolt for the camshaft. But before that we're going to need to install this tensioner let's say so to tighten a little bit the timing chain before tightening the bolt bolts so now I'm going to install it actually I'm going to install it finger tight because it should be tightened only 0.6 Nm which is nothing so I'm just going to finger tight it and after that I'm going to tighten up the bolt bolts So the boat bolts are tightened, the boat camshaft bolts. Right now we have still the tensioner, the mechanical tensioner. And now the engine should be timed because everything is aligned. The crankshaft pin, 
the camshaft, the balance shafts, everything is tight. Now I'm going to rotate the engine two times and I'm going to recheck everything. Is everything going to fit once again so to be sure that everything is timed. Uh, but before that I'm going to probably reinstall the old hydraulic tensioner which if you decide to reuse it first of all you're going to need to drain up the oil which is inside so for that I'm going to squeeze the tensioner two times on a vise so to don't have any oil inside after two revolutions the crank pin is installed once again in the hole in the well and let's take the camshaft reluctor wheels or how, how to call it the reading wheels for the camshaft sensors so it fits perfectly once again like that and the two squares, squares the intake camshaft like that it sits flat to the bridge and the the exhaust one they are actually the same once again it sits flat to the bridge like that so yeah we are exactly at timed I'm just going to check the balance shafts with uh, this tool but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be fine the things that left to be reinstalled is the valve cover, the high pressure fuel pump the alternator, the intake manifold, I already tightened up the exhaust manifold uh, and yeah, the other thing uh, which is a little bit complicated is the crankshaft sealant ring on the crankshaft pulley this was the hardest job to time the engine not so hard actually but yeah I must uh, reinstall these two oil nozzles and the vacuum pump and the injectors and a lot of stuff so from now on it's not so interesting I'm going to continue and when I'm done I'm going to take the camera and going to see is the engine going to start up ok guys so pretty much everything is assembled back together as you can see everything, everything is in place the injectors, the coils, the sparks all the, all the hoses the only thing that is left is to fill the engine with oil and coolant and we can try our first start as we can see we're going to run, run the engine without the crankshaft pulley because I want to check for leaks on the crankshaft seal which actually I made a totally separate video about that so I'm going to leave it like that to see for any leaks <clears throat> and let's try the first start Okay guys, uh, as we saw on the first start, we had some really bad misfires so I take the diagnostic tool to see what is happening and I have a dead miss on cylinder number 1 and cylinder number 4 and I started with the obvious things, I started swapping uh, coils and strangely enough when I swap coil number 1 with co coil number 2 the misfire disappeared so really strange but right now, let me show you on the diagnostic tool right now the car is running smooth, no misfires so we need to go in the cold spots, no cold spots so yeah, really strange, not sure why I was giving uh, two misfires on cylinder number 1 and 4 but when I swap the coils, the misfire disappeared probably some bad contact on the ports of the coils, not sure but Everything seems fine for now. Let me check one more time for hot cops. No hot cops, which is cool. So the thing that I'm going to worry about now is the cool temperature of course. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait for the for the electrical fan to turn on so to be sure that we don't have any air in the system. Let me check for do we have a good heating inside the car because this is a good indication 
if you have a good heating in the car most likely you are not going to have a lot of air in the coolant system so yeah we need to switch off this like that uh, what else yeah, let's put this so most, most likely there will be no a lot of air in the system because pretty much I put in the coolant system roughly the amount that I drained so yeah if, if it needs probably half a liter maximum but yeah pretty hot so okay guys I'm going to wait for the car to heat up I'm going to take it out actually because uh, here is getting really smelly in the shop so okay guys the car was running for about I don't know how how much probably 20 minutes and for now everything seems fine and it is running smooth actually without any misfires on anything like that so I think the car is ready to be shipped to the owner and actually he's right here okay so the owner is here and I'm pretty much ready to give his car to him as we saw we changed the valve seals we changed the cylinder head gasket with that a valve job we changed the water pump we changed a lot of parts and the repair was kind of expensive this is what it is it needs probably pistons and piston rings to make a full overhaul but the owner is going to decide that so for now we're going to leave this to his choice for now the car is running it's not smoking everything seems fine we don't have any problem with the all separation system this is how i can done for now and uh, what do you think i'm selling this